Recently, my little Chevy HHR died to death. It had well over 200,000 miles on it, and uh, the dashboard sort of looked like Christmas all the time. I think there's only one warning light that isn't shining. <laughs> and uh, so my wife said it was time to get another car. And uh, when we went out to get one, I was reminded of a story way back when we were newlyweds and I had found a used car up in the city of Hamilton, about 30 miles away from where we lived, and um, uh, talking to the used car salesman, and he said, well, this car needs uh, some tires on it before we can sell it. So we went over to the tire shop, and while we were waiting for this car that I was going to try out to get its tires, we were sitting in his car chatting. And uh, just to sort of pass the time, he said to me, thinking it was an innocuous question, so what do you do? And I said, well, I preach the gospel. And his response was a little surprising. He said, I can't believe what people are doing these days. <laughs> and it reminded me of the words of the man who went up to the temple and said, I thank thee I am not as other men are. And so I said to, said to him, so you are a church attending man? He said, oh yes, quite regularly. And I said, uh, do you read your Bible? And he says, well, uh, once in a while. And I said, well, maybe you could tell me then, what is the greatest sin? And he thought for a minute and he said, well, uh, there are seven deadly sins, aren't there? And I said, well, no, I'm, I'm talking about the Bible now. And uh, he said, I don't really know. And I said, well, it's the sin of pride. And he was quite taken aback by this. And I said, well, you know, this was the sin that brought the whole thing crashing down. Lucifer, son of the morning, said, I will, I will, I will. I will ascend above heaven. I'll, I'll set my throne above God. I'll be God. And this is exactly the sin he taught the human race. In fact, at the heart of every sin is pride. It's the heart that says, not thy will, but mine be done. In Proverbs 6.16, we read, There are six things the Lord hates, Yea, seven are an abomination to him. And the first one mentioned is a proud look. And the New Testament tells us that one of the three components of the world system in which we live is the pride of life. And the scripture says it's not of the Father, it's of the world. And again, the scripture tells us only by pride comes contention. If you'll find strife, upset, problems, it's because people have a personal agenda. It's pride, the sin of pride. And the Bible tells us God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And so this dear man, we had quite a conversation, but it, it shocked him to think that the greatest sin was not the sin of adultery or murder or any of these horrible things that we think about, but pride. That was at the root of it all. And, you know, there will be people in heaven who were forgiven murderers. Paul will be there. And there will be forgiven adulterers. David will be there. And there will be people who have committed all sorts of sins. The one sin that will not be represented there is the heart of the person who says, I will not have God's way. I will have my own way. And so, as C.S. Lewis said, written over heaven, it says, not my will, but thine be done. And over hell, it says, not thy will but mine be done. Oh, that God would preserve us from the sin of pride and that we would come into the school of the Lord Jesus. He said, learn from me. I am meek and lowly and you'll find rest to your souls. And there's nothing worse than a person 
who is so bent on getting their own way that they miss out on the glorious opportunity to have God's way. I've had my way, and I've had God's way, and there's no comparison. My way stinks. It always ends up going in the wrong direction. It always ends up on a dead-end street. And God's way is always best. So let me encourage you. This salesman, I, I thought of him the other day, and I prayed for him. I don't know where he is. It's been a long time since I saw him. But I prayed for him, and I prayed for all the people who, through religious pride, ethnic pride, you know the old preachers used to talk pride of face, pride of race, pride of grace, and warns us that eye trouble is the thing that robs us of our enjoyment of the things of God. So, God knows how to fix pride. You know, if we let him at it, he won't leave us much to be proud of. But he's the only person who knows how to humble us without humiliating us. And that's a great thing. Thank God that he wants us to learn the way of Jesus, who humbled himself and is now exalted to the right hand of God.